right, what up, Eagle Talk fam? What's up? What's up? What, what, what's up, y'all? We are back again. We have a live studio audience, which is pretty cool. It is uh, cool. We got a we got a special episode. Actually, we used to do this on IG and Facebook, and they used to freeze all of the time. Oh my remember? goodness! Yeah, we, we did uh, Q and As, and and it just was horrible a lot of times. But it's real gonna be kind of cool to do it in person with the question and answer. So that's our subject for today. Yeah. So. Real quick, if you have, like, all of my friends, a lot of my friends are here in real life, and my husband knows, I will wear you out with questions, right? Table topics is my love language. Like, I love, and as a matter of fact, speaking of which, Corey and I just downloaded an app that if y'all want to sponsor this podcast, pair the app, you should, because this app is it's all questions for couples yeah so we answer these series of questions but i can't see Corey's answers until i answer the question like that's how deep i am about yeah. these question answer games it's actually a good way uh in my opinion for couples to communicate during the day without communicating yeah you know I mean? and quite honestly these table topics came from when our relationship was real stale and we really weren't friends and really ain't had nothing to talk about, right. we could bust out these questions yeah, yeah, yeah. and not just be at dinner like... It was a con- constant, constant theme for us. Yep. So we're going to start with a little Q&A. So we are going to be calling audience members up. Um, just to, And they can ask us anything, y'all. Anything from relationship to business. And, I mean, we might even ask them something, too, because they be knowing stuff. Like, right. we're not the only ones that know some things. Right. So first, we're going to have um, one of our good friends who was previously on the podcast. My we're, boy. We're going to link the episode here in the show notes where he was at. But Dr. Demetrius Anderson Huge supporter. He's the homie. Come on up here, Dr. D. Come on, doctor. <laughs> Yay. So, what, up, what up? How y'all doing? Good. Welcome back. I know you just got back from Cali, right? Yeah, Cali. I uh, went to uh, our baby moon. Oh. Went on the baby moon That's to right. uh, Half Moon Bay at uh, the Ritz. It was, man, fantastic. Maybe. That sound rich. He sent, he, sent, he, sent me a, <laughs> he, sent, he sent me a nice picture overlooking the golf course. So I know yeah. it, was, it was dope. Look yeah, it was you. dope. It was dope. We'll definitely, be, we'll definitely be going back. When's the baby due? December. Uh, December 26th. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Right. A little Christmas, Christmas baby. baby. Clap it yeah. up for my boy. Yep. Yep. And his first baby yeah. girl. And first baby girl. So yeah. we're excited about that. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thank well, you. what is your question, Dr. D? My question is, you know, we're, we're on the uh, entrepreneurial space um, and we could be grinding out for months at a time, you know, working really hard. How do you prevent burnout? <laughs> oh, uh, I, <laughs> you take it away. Um, delegate. You got to delegate. And I know you know this because me and you both share uh, the book of Who Not How. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I've read it twice and we have really uh, we brought on Kim and in my business that was my thing i had i was trying to do too much uh i was burning myself out time and time again as you know i'm, I'm a to-do list type of guy uh, i even make a to-do list on friday nights and saturday nights whether i hit them all you know not all of the time but when i don't it rolls open to the next day so what i've learned is i had to just delegate responsibilities and uh kind of what do they say work on your business not in your business so yeah. much I have a few ways that I think about this and what comes to mind immediately um, is that I know when I first got started in entrepreneurship, I was doing a lot of busy work, right? Um, Either stuff that wasn't the best use of my time or things that I just felt like I needed to, my hands needed to be moving, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a part of a mastermind with the amazing Jennifer Allwood. And Jennifer asked the question. She just, she, she was, it was about this conversation, avoiding burnout and how to really master your time and, and work to your best capabilities. And she asked a few questions and I might botch them, but it was something like, what are you doing in your business that you love? What are you doing that you hate? What are you doing that somebody else could be doing? And what are you doing that you could stop, yeah. you know, and you because yeah. sometimes we're doing stuff in our business that we could stop. And we think that it's so like, like detriment, like we have to get it done mm-hmm. and nobody notices. And something for me, I send out a weekly email. Or I used to send out a weekly email to my clients and I absolutely love sending that email. But boy, them seven days will roll real quick. Right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it was a time consuming email. It was a time consuming. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe I could do it once every two weeks. And I started doing it once every two weeks and nobody has called me like, I can't believe you're not doing it once a week, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I was putting pressure on myself that wasn't there. Um, and then there are certain times, like, and, and there are definitely times in business where we got to sprint, we got to go hard. But there are times where 
and I'm in that season right now where like I really don't work on weekends. I built a team um, that can support the real estate business. So now I can be creative in other ways, but I have to be okay with, you know, letting not go. eating the whole, right, letting go, yeah. mm-hmm. it, not having an ego trip, splitting a piece of the pie, helping others grow. Um, and then another thing for me is to avoid burnout is I have to take control of my day. And a huge factor is right now, I'm very, very intentional, not just about my morning routine, but my night routine. And my night routine, meaning that I'm shutting everything down. Like Corey will tell you, I turn my phone off at 9 p.m. Mm. Because I don't want to look at an email. I don't want to, because if anything happens after 9, if if my business cannot survive from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., then that's reflective of me as a leader. Right. Right? Right. So by protecting my space and my time, in that way, I'm avoiding burnout because I am giving myself time to refuel, to think, to pour, to create. And literally, since I've been turning my phone off in the morning, I wake up and then I hit our, I'll call Kim or Corey and like, hey, this is my idea or this is like I have clarity about this situation because a lot of us in entrepreneurship, we don't give ourselves time to think because we're so busy doing mm. and we really get paid to think. Okay, I'm glad right, you said right. that. So, I totally understand where this question is coming from with the two little ones. They be on the way. Yeah. Third office you about to open. Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Easy to get burnt out. But I'll tell you this. Um, and this is where I struggled a lot. Trusting people mm-hmm. to do what, what they hired them for, what you mm-hmm. hired them for. That's hard, right? You have to build the relationship. But I think that um, that's going to be a major key. I also think, too, that um, you got to take care of yourself. Right. And whether it's kind of and she is a 10 o'clock sleeper, right? 10, 15. She's shutting it down, but she's up at five. Mm-hmm. Right. But she that's her window. Um, for me, I'm a night out. Right. It doesn't work that, that well for me. But I think your your massages, your your me times, whether it's golf, whether it's uh, it's kind of like she's saying we really and I've learned that also from her that I don't get paid to work. I get I get paid to think. So in that, I know I need to literally sit still. And just kind of turn my, my brain on my day off for 15 to 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that'll, yeah. that'll also uh, help with the burnout. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank I you, appreciate man. it. Thank, thank you, man. You. Thanks All right. Question. Thank you. No, y'all. No, that's a great question. For sure. Um, and I think that a lot of entrepreneurs, that's the episode that we shot. Um, y'all go back and watch last week's episode. And we talked about why people start because stop in their entrepreneurship journey because it's kind of like all of your have you ever been in a place where all your dreams coming true but you're like i know it's gonna be like this (laughs) so maybe maybe i should stop you know what i'm saying maybe we stop having kids maybe we should stop you know doing all these things but just putting those those things in place and a lot of times we stress our own selves out yeah Yeah. all right y'all coming next we have my birthday twin I mean, ain't he handsome? He was born on September 26th. Give it up. Ain't Sexual that. chocolate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, is my, this is my boy Alvin Copeson. He's a, a great realtor here. I've known Alvin, I don't know what, uh, about three, four years now, right? Yeah, about four years. Yeah, we've done now. some deals together. Um, definitely respected in the business, and he has a question for us. How do you balance uh, family time and parenting being entrepreneurs? F them kids. No, <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's so silly. That, that's, a, that's a great question uh, But I think we're probably going to have a different answer And that is because Corey is 22 Yeah Right so Normally the weekends he's gone um, Now I will say that I've been Better with the little one And this is my first year Actually taking him to the bus stop at 6.50 in the morning <laughs> It's the first year You using that word year real loose it's <laughs> That first I'm, three yeah, weeks uh, of the school year. I'm not an early. I'm not. A, I'm not a six o'clock in the morning guy. But I, I do make it my business now to, to get him there, um, and just re- intentional on the weekends for sure. Uh, he's in gymnastics on Wednesdays, uh, and Rosemary normally when he comes home a little bit after three, that first hour is their time. They'll just sit on the couch and either talk or watch a movie or something. Right? Yeah. So I am. I'm a huge. First of all, we don't do this perfect at all, right? You know, you do the best you can with your kids and you just pray that the Lord fill in the gaps, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, um, but with that being said, I do think that, um, you know, our kids understand 
that some of the work that we're doing now is to build the life that we want them to have. Yeah. And we have those type of conversations with our kids. So it might look something like, you know, if Cameron's like, mommy, can we have movie night? But we can't have movie night tonight because I have to go show a house. Why do you have to show a house? Well, do you like living in this house? Okay, right. I got to go show that house. Right, right. Gotcha. But on Monday or on whatever day, like I, I, we block our schedule in a way where we can have pockets of time and they are disappointed sometimes. I'm yeah. not going to act like they're not disappointed sometimes. And I wish that um, we, we're we learning. We're evolving. Mm -hmm. And one thing for me is, like, I'm working, like I told Corey, when Cameron started school, so something new for him, finding pockets of time. So he's not a morning person, but the couple mornings he started to get up, Cameron really looks forward to, is yeah. daddy going to ride me to the bus stop today? Right. And literally, they only walk. It's six houses down, but he drive them. I digress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but true. he looks forward to that. So that's a pocket of time where it's like that he knows his dad sleeps in. But you are waking up and you are spending some time with me in the morning. In my in the afternoons, I've tried to do a better job of putting my phone, not planning anything so that when he is there and he gets off the bus, he and I can hang out for a little bit. And if I can't, if, I, if I'm not going to be there, I let him know. Right? I, he just doesn't show up at home and not know. Yeah. So having those conversations, but it's hard, you know, it's really um, hard and you do the best that you can, but we really try to bring them alongside us as much as possible. But I know you have little girls. So what does that look like for you in your life? Um, like you say, it is difficult. Uh, those pockets for me is I'll take my girls to school and pick them up every day. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know like sometimes after picking them up can maybe be crazy for me or especially in between time. But as long as I'm able to get them up, get them fed, talk to them in the morning and mm -hmm. pick them up, that's my time for me. Yeah. Yeah. So he asked uh, marriage and family. Oh. So what what would you say for yeah, marriage? What does family time look like? How do y'all manage that? So, so dates are non-negotiable for me and Corey. Yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time together. Uh, sometimes I tell him like we better booze than parents like, <laughs> <laughs> working on it um, but be, because we can be so it, it can like things can take you take your attention away yeah. um, so we definitely have pockets every week where we are physically and it, it doesn't have to be fancy but we are going on a date and going out to eat with each other and then we let the kids know you're not invited Cause mommy and daddy need to have time. Yeah. But then also I think that we have check like at least one checkpoint every day where we are talking to each other. And it's amazing how many marriages don't talk to each other. We talk about the business of life and we have recently, like I will tell like Corey, I love you. Look at me. Go for it. I, I know. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I love you. I know you do. Um, but like he wants to talk to me about business all the time. Right. And sometimes I have to tell him, like, I got my own stuff going on, dog. Um, and what, why I love you, and I, will, I love to hear about this 19th house of the week. Right. Um, I don't have the capacity to talk about that. But if you want to kick it on TikTok, I'm your girl. Like, right, like right. What, what you want to laugh about, like, what you want to do. So having those honest conversations with each other, but making space for each other, yeah. right? And putting each other on a schedule. Everything that's important to you, you put on a schedule. Mm -hmm. And it's real easy and I think it's even easier when I don't know what's harder when one person is entrepreneur or both people are. It's real easy to put work because everything in business feels pressing. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we got to ask ourselves the question, like, is this really pressing or am I making this pressing? Mm -hmm. Like, so um, just really it's non-negotiable. Like, it's non-negotiable. I'm going to brush my teeth before I leave home. Right. It's non-negotiable that I'm going to spend time with my husband every single day and we go go on a date every single week. It's non-negotiable. Yeah. And I think... Um just being honest with you, we come from homes where our parents didn't spend a lot of time or communicate with yeah. each other, right? So we just kind of told each other that that's not how we want to live, you know? Um, you know, We'd we, rather be not together, not together yeah. than have a marriage that mirrored that. Yeah, yeah. And we decided that early, you know? So we... I overly communicate, you know. I don't. I don't have a. He I don't have a problem with it. Um, like homeboy, like. I love, Love you again. <laughs> I love no, you again. It's okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm, I'm um, I, I, one day I call, I, I just tallied up the calls. It was like 
19 calls Because right <laughs> Corey but, 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 like, but it's not like I where like you tacos, at. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, it's not like. Do I get lettuce on my cheese? Right, like today, I was uh, I was in line at uh Torchies. At Torchies today. I was on the phone just ordering my food, making, you know, just going through the day, right? <laughs> and then we'll hang up here, coming right back. I'm like, what you want? I, I got my food. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's just, all in my ears. That's just how and we I'm are. on a diet. I'm like, get off my phone, yeah. eating queso. Okay, yeah. But uh, <laughs> well, I took I took a car to uh, Clark's oh. truck to Clarksville the other day, and uh, I left early, so I did, it wasn't nothing really open. I, I grabbed a, a Coke and some Doritos, and I only I was on the phone the whole two hours, and I left the, the half of the Doritos in a in a truck. You would have thought I listen. Just, oh I got in my car. Y'all know I'm doing E2 and fitness. I got in my car in my fasting window. I'm intermittent fasting. Sitting on my <laughs> um, in my driver's seat is like a half a bag of Doritos open. I'm like, dog, I don't know who you think you're married to, but I'm not in my go away. I'm thick. I'm trying to yeah, trying to get it ready. You take your Doritos with you. Right, right, then right. we talk 15 more times a day. Yeah, but we travel a lot too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how did I get to that? But no, we do because we we need that one on one time, man. And, and really, a lot of times it's just to communicate, right? Because we our lives are so fast. We bring in Corey along. Um, and we just spend a lot of time working. I understand that we need one-on-one time, and we meet a lot of great people on vacation yeah. too. We went went to um, Martha's Vineyard to see my cousin a couple, well, I guess about two months ago now, and that was just the most amazing trip because I got a chance to just pick her brain on family and business, and their business is twenty x mine and yours together, right? So she really didn't. Um, I won't say she really didn't have time, but that's her place where they go and her husband and her family to talk family stuff and kind of catch up they normally spend a month of august there yeah uh so that was a really really amazing trip to see how some people at a much higher level are balancing exactly and and and, and i just want to say this even as i say balance balance is like a myth yeah i think the word is prioritizing yeah. right yeah. how are we like so for everyone who's out there trying to achieve balance like good luck sis yeah. <laughs> right but the even on the days that you know my hu- I can't I can't be with my husband or we couldn't have a conversation or I couldn't show up the way my kids want to at the end of the day do they feel like I prioritize them yeah. and and it, and when I'm in a season when they don't then I have to be honest with myself about what am I prioritizing what am I chasing because at the end of the day you know if something happened to me all y'all get another realtor right y'all ain't never gonna die. y'all not gonna be like i'm never gonna buy a house because rosemary right. died right. no yeah. but if something happens to me it will be impactful to my family yeah sure. so having to prioritize them yes. thank y'all thank good you man. brother thank you man Yay. <laughs> all right that was a good question all right now we got one of my favorite people tiffany come on girl hey tiffany Now, look, y'all have to remember, Tiffany, we're going to link her episode, but she is the owner of Spacelift. Spacelift. Check it out. (laughs) Spacelift Home. Yeah, she has lifted a lot of our spaces in our homes. Oh, my God. We weren't playing when we said we invited our real friends. Like, we just go on the street finding folks to be up there. (laughs) But what's your question, darling? Okay, my question is in a previous episode, you all spoke to doing what you're doing currently for your older self. Mm -hmm. So, What does that look like for Rosemary and Corey? What is it that you want for your older self that you're working towards now? Future self. Oh, that's a good question. You want to take it? You want me to start? Um, let me ponder. You, I, I know, but go. You start. Mine is a one hundred percent passive income. Um, I want to be able to travel. I want uh my kids to pretty much run the business, and I don't want to be boggled down with it. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned to you um, Well I'm sure I have before That my parents are both 71 And they're both still working um, I'm, I've asked them to stop working But they still want to work right So I want to just hit an age In the next couple of years Where I hate to give a number But something like You know a couple hundred grand Coming in the mail From rental properties You know um, I still own the barber school In Chicago That's doing amazing We bought the building A year and a half ago uh, We have financial aid So that business has scaled um, in the last two years, amazingly. So I just want to continue to work on those two things to free me up just to be able to do whatever it is I want to do in life. Yeah. When I think about my future self, I mean, obviously, um, my man got the money worked out, right? So I ain't got to worry about that. But um, no, I do. I do think about because <laughs> <laughs> he will also mess the money. Well, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll be buying some. So house. no, but 
but when I think about my future self, I think that like I probably would have answered that differently before the last year that I've had, right? So um, y'all know, well, you, if you don't know, um, I've experienced a lot of loss in my life, particularly the loss of my mom. And I just had a conversation with someone not too long ago. And I was like, I feel like I have nothing to lose anymore and not nothing to lose from a, you know, how some people say that from like a, a, a place of lack, like I ain't got nothing to lose. So, yeah, but I mean, like I have nothing to lose. So that means I got to go for it all. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I want my future. So like when I think about my future self, I see her, um, I see her speaking, you know, I see her encouraging on multiple platforms. I see her writing books. I see her, you know, running with grandkids and being healthy enough and not huffing and puffing while she's doing it. You know, I see her traveling with her husband. I see her communicating with her kids. I see her, you know, waving the yes banner to the Lord. Right. So what does that look like now? So right now I need to be doing things like, Right, we brought in our real like we Corey and I literally could just live off of our real estate business, mm -hmm. but we're investing in teaching courses, investing in Eagle Talk because I know that that's what my future self she'll appreciate that. But my current self is kind of like, oh, child, that's an investment, right? Um, going on date nights, we just talked about that with Alvin, communicating with Corey. I know that my future self, like, he, I don't know why people think. You and your husband ain't been friends for 40 years. I don't know why y'all think y'all gonna be cool on the cruise in y'all 70s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna be real still. So my future self is dependent on us having hard conversations, on us talking to each other, on us spending time with each other. You know, my future self is dependent on me building bridges and creating relationships and getting on camera when I don't want to get on camera mm -hmm. and, and, you know, shooting my shot for opportunities when I'm, when I'm scared that I might get a no. My future self is like, but you need to do it because we won't exist if you don't do that now. Yeah. So, um, so that's and I, I'm getting a little passionate about it. But I have nothing to lose, right? I have lost a lot, and I've lost a lot. Um, and from losing a lot, the Lord has shown me that I, even though you have all these things that you've lost, I've still never lost. I've still never let you go. Mm -hmm. So you have no reason to hold back. Right. I've put, I've deposited all this in you, and my future self is depending on me to go after it. Yeah, you. Um, I don't know when it was. Maybe a year or two. We were having a conversation about future, and I remember you telling me you didn't you didn't want to be Rosemary the realtor at sixty. No, right? You want to go ahead and do what you need to do now to free yourself up. And I think the Eagle Talk has really been a blessing for you. Yeah, you know, um, giving us a different platform. I'm thinking about. I was in a meeting yesterday. And the person that I'm, it's, I just really like meeting with him because he helps me think big. And he told me two things that I need to be doing. We need to be doing at all times. One was constantly writing. Mm -hmm. And two was constantly recording. Yeah. And he said, that's just the way of the future. Right. Um, so old thinking goes out and, and this is the new, the new way um, to create the content, sell it off and to be able to free your time. Yeah. And what you're creating right now, like, I think I just, I finished the book. Um, and I'm going to read it. <laughs> I wrote it. I haven't read it yet. But even that, like, in as hard as it was to write it, I know that my children's children's children, right, are going to be blessed because my current self who didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. did it for the future. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. Right. Now, if I could also stop eating chips, chips and queso for my future self, <laughs> then I'd really be on <laughs> something. <Yeah. laughs> So I hope we answer your question. That's it. You did. What Thank are you, you doing for your future self, ma'am? I want to know. Oh, a big part of that is just doing things scared and what you spoke to about having nothing to lose. So um, a big part of what I'm doing now for my future self is <clears throat> positioning myself to where my own child, who is six, um, where he kind of walks in that path of confidence yeah. and sees that, you know, I'm not going to be my future self having to kind of pick my kid up and constantly push them. Yes, he'll be scared about certain things, yeah. right? Um, that's just part of our human nature. But I want him to have that confidence already instilled in him because he sees it at home. Yeah. Um, and I think that'll help me in my parenting journey, yeah. you know, just as he gets older. So um, just putting myself out there, exposing myself to a lot of things, um, knowing that his eyes are watching and following yeah, shout out, kudos to you for um, doing that. Yeah, for Thinking doing like it that. and and uh, to for doing it so young. Tell it just real quick if you can tell a story about the 
the broker in Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a broker in Atlanta, Denise the Broker, um, super dope. But she, um, she, I went to a conference that she was in, and I, her name is Denise the Broker on Instagram. And she told so many stories, but she talked about her son. And she said every commission check, every project, she brings her son up. She's a single mom. Her son's like 13. Um, she brings him alongside her. And she said that people, like, these kids grow up and inherit grandma house and we wonder why they lose it in a year mm-hmm. because no one's ever shown them no right. one's ever taught them so she's committed to showing and teaching her son and sis just opened up a brokerage in dubai mm-hmm. that her son gets to see and just what you're saying is is that um i feel the same way like one of the biggest things why i love how we moved to texas and a lot of things that we're doing because now this is normal for your kids yeah. Right. You stepping out and doing business the way you're doing business, us doing this, even though it's scary and new territory for us. If this is all your kids know, that's normal for them. Right. So they're not going to accept. You know what I mean? Like like my kids kind of like I asked my son, like what he want for them? Steak. Like, I don't know. Hot dogs. I want steak because that's what's normal for him. Right. right. And and a lot. And we think that with some of the things that we do for them, but what we model for them. So, again, like, that's why we go on dates and that's why we communicate. Honestly, that's why I work out because I want my I want my grandkids to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So I want Mm -hmm. my sons to marry people that they love who are also committed to being healthy Mm -hmm. because they're going to think it's weird if they woman or whoever they love just sitting around all day because they they don't, you know, their parents weren't like that. So even when I'm exercising, I'm thinking about this is what I'm modeling for them because this will be normal for them. Mm -hmm. And that's going to continue my legacy. Like I can leave them money, but if everybody got hypertension, high blood pressure and you know what I'm saying? Only eat donuts all day, then they go die off and mess up the money anyway. Right. (laughs) Right. So I think a lot of what we're doing on a daily basis, we really have to think. it, It seems like it's so big, but it's so small. Truly, every decision we make about how we how you speak to your husband, how you how you handle a difficult situation, how you managing your money, if you stand on the job and complaining and scared for the rest of you, all of those things. Not only is it affecting you, but it's affecting the people that you love. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Thank, thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> Yay! What's up? What's up? What's up? So I was in uh, school. I went back to school to get my master's about two years ago. And my professor, he had a quote that I love. He said, everyone lives in a 200 year present. And another way he worded it was everyone lives in a 200 year history. So what I heard, what I heard was we're living. How can I word this? We're living a certain way because of what happened 200 years ago, yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah. means. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So y'all talked about what you wanted, what your future self to live like, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all have a history. What insecurities comes up that kind of block you from that? And how do you, how do you Ooh, combat that? It's a great question. Um, and we probably have a million stories that we can talk about that. But what I think about is when I moved to Texas, I realized how much junk I had. And how my thinking about the way other people thought about me um, growing up on the south side of Chicago, just even just from friendships and relationships and how you can't trust people and, you know, don't tell your business and all these different things. I was bringing all of that past energy into my new situation. And as a result of that, there was no growth. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wish I could tell you that there aren't times now that. Because our past is our past, right? And I'm not ashamed of any part of our past because our past is what has built us. But I think that as you progress and as we're thinking about, like, there are things that we struggle with that I don't want our kids to struggle with. There are things, thought patterns that um, still, insecurities that I still have that um, I want to make sure that I'm aware of them now so that I don't pass them along, but I address them. So that's why you need to spend time with yourselves, have quiet time and have therapy. <laughs> like, cause there is so much gift in going to a therapist yeah. and having someone where you can talk about and unpack who you are and why we do the things the way that we do. 
and from you know if if that's being black if that's you know being a woman if that's living in a new place if that's dealing with grief there's so much in our history and our grandparents history and our great grandparents history that impact how we think today we need to have a space to put that all on the table and then you know not be ashamed of any part of our story but embrace it but decide what parts of our story get to go into the next chapter and they all don't have to go into the next chapter that makes sense it makes sense (laughs) (laughs) thank you robbie thank you robbie (laughs) all right y'all so that was super fun um i enjoy answering those questions and Ronnie made me think a little bit on that last one. Yeah, I let you handle it. Because <laughs> Corey, like, look, I'm still, I'm still from the streets, uh, right? I mean, not the streets, the streets. <laughs> no, that was good. Uh, we do like uh, Q and A's. We'll do it again. Um, we actually have something coming up for you guys in November. That was yes. a, that was a big hit at Eagle Talk Live. We're going to do a real big uh, speed networking. Because we want to get uh, our audience and just our friends to to meet other people, right, and do do business with them and create good friendships. So uh, that'll be we talk about that in the next episode. Well, I give I'll just give you a little brief because I want you to mark your calendar. So November tenth um, is a speed networking event. We will have all of the information. Make sure you're on the Eagle Talk with team Lewis private Facebook group, because that's where we give all of our updates first. But like we're here with some really dope people having some really dope conversations, business owners, doctors, lawyers, realtors, brokers, water people. I don't know what he do. He do something with the water. That's really, really important. <laughs> right. But all of these folks, we're going to invite them and you to be a part of the Eagle talk networking event. Net is going to be November 10th, yep. 2022. Yep. Um, in case you're watching this next year. November 10th, 2022 in Frisco, Texas. So join the Facebook group so you can be a part of that. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. See you next week. Bye.